What do you get when you cross Save by the Bell, Karate, and Giant Robot Monster Fights? You get the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Not that one. Yeah, there it is. That one. Those guys. Yeah. Power Rangers was probably the biggest phenomenon of the early 90s. I can't think of another show that gained so much popularity in such a short amount of time than Power Rangers. Power Rangers was directly responsible for a 69% increase in the martial arts industry, the destruction of 4,666,420 trees used in the making of karate boards, a 42% increase in ER visits for kids, and directly responsible for me growing my hair out like Tommy the Green Ranger. I did not look as cool as he did. At all. The basic premise of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is as follows. Rita Repulsa, an evil space witch, escapes her prison dumpster that's on the moon after being trapped for 10,000 years. Like all bad guys, she sets her sights on Earth to conquer through the creation of monsters attacking and destroying one city. Zordon, a floating head, and Alpha 5, a really, really, really annoying robot, are the protectors of Earth. Since neither of them have any skills beyond exposition, they recruit five teenagers with attitudes that are masters of karate, dance, and gymnastics in order to defeat the evil forces of Rita Repulsa. Now, Zordon straight up recruits five teenagers, high school students, and gives them unbelievable powers, weapons, and giant dinosaur robots to defend the fictional city of Angel Grove, California. That's it. Nowhere else. If you've spent more than five minutes watching the Power Rangers, you're probably aware that it is a mixture of two different TV shows. One of them being a Japanese show called Sentai Zio Ranger, and the other one is the Power Rangers show with voiceover work from the actors that you see on the show, as well as live action. The show had the same formula every week. Rita is in a bad mood, yells at her subordinates, her magician Finster, reenacts the scene from Ghost, and creates a monster to wreak havoc on the city of Angel Grove. Rita sends the Putty Patrol to fight the teens and they are easily defeated. This is what the putties sound like. <laughs> now it's time for the monster. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Cue five minutes of morphing, karate yells, flips, and action poses. They fight the monster, nearly defeating it until, uh-oh, Rita throws her staff to Earth to make her monster grow. Monster big, Power Ranger small, time to bring in the dinosaur robots. Another five minutes of dinosaur robots changing into the Megazord. Megazord and monster fight, it looks like the fight could be lost by our heroes, but wait, no, why don't we just use this power sword, cut this dickhead in half? Rangers win, Rita cries, a lesson is learned while drinking smoothies at Ernie's Juice Bar. Rinse and repeat. Now, no joke, this is how every episode starts and finishes. Every once in a while there might be an episode where they combine all their weapons together and destroy the monster before it has a chance to grow big and destroy the city again. Go, go, That's gotta be a nightmare for FEMA. Uh, now I remember when the first episode of Power Rangers aired on television, it was on the Saturday morning Fox Kids Network. Now, what was really strange was the first episode that aired wasn't, of course, the first episode in the series. Instead, it was an episode entitled Food Fight, which featured a giant pig monster. Now, I had never seen the show before, and I was a little bit confused, but hey, karate, giant robots, monsters, what's not to love about it? The episode was a little bit strange. I mean, the Power Rangers already had their powers. There was no backstory. It was just, here you go, enjoy. And you know what? Kids ate it up, literally. Power Ranger cakes. My friends and I became obsessed with this show. And then they introduced probably the greatest and most popular character ever to appear on the show, Tommy Oliver, the Green Ranger. Tommy was featured in a five episode story arc called Green with Evil. Basically the story about that is Rita decided what better way to defeat the Power Rangers than to have her own teenager with attitude. She turns him evil and he becomes the Green Ranger. I mean, he had this dope gold shield, he had this crazy evil laugh. <laughs> he had a dragon dagger which he used to summon the Dragon Zord. And he kicked a lot of ass. It looked like the Power Rangers had finally met their match. 
Now eventually the Green Ranger was defeated and he was able to join the Power Rangers in the fight for good. While it was pretty much guaranteed that the Power Rangers were going to defeat every single monster that Rita threw at him, you throw the Green Ranger into the mix, now his robot is going on top of their robot. So it's like even bigger explosions. Now, eventually they had to find a way to make the Power Rangers vulnerable, so of course you go after the strongest member of the team. Rita devised a plan to take back the power that she had given Tommy, since she is the one who created his power coin. The power coin, which was the power source for the Power Rangers to morph. <laughs> it's so ridiculous explaining this stuff. They tied the power coin to a green candle, and when that green candle burned down, supposedly Tommy would lose his powers. And sure enough, he did, and left the show for a while. But eventually, he came back in one of the most mind-blowing episodes I think my 10-year-old self had ever seen in a TV show. Tommy the Green Ranger came back, and it was all me and my friends could talk about the next day at school. Where's everybody? Season 1 of Power Rangers lasted for 60 episodes. That is a huge achievement for a television show aimed at children. My interest in Power Rangers was very short-lived. I was already transferring from elementary school into middle school. This show is very much geared towards younger children. The overall themes of the show aren't that dark. It's not a show that has mature content. It's just karate and monsters and robots. According to my very quick Google search, there are 27 seasons of Power Rangers, and each one of them has a different name. Now, I only knew one. There are so many that I didn't want to take the time to memorize it, so I have a sheet of paper. There's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers, Power Rangers Zero, Power Rangers Turbo, Power Rangers in Space, Lost Galaxy, Lightspeed Rescue, Time Force, Wild Force, Ninja Storm, Dino Thunder, SPD, which stands for Space Patrol Delta, Mystic Force, Samurai, Mega Force, Dino Charge, Ninja Steel, Beast Morphers, and Dino Fury. There are also three feature length films involving the Power Rangers. I have no interest in checking out any of the other incarnations of the Power Rangers. For me, the show just kind of doesn't really do much for me anymore. I think that any sort of influence that it had on me was for a very, very short amount of time. And when you grow out of that time, you don't really need to revisit it. I was definitely embarrassed to admit that I watched this show when I was younger. I had a group of friends that were very much into the show, but beyond that, you'd have other kids in the class that would make fun of you for watching it. It's what kids do. However, I didn't stop watching it because of that. I just grew out of it. For me, there was just no reason to continue watching the show. I was already taking martial arts and I would go to classes early, so I was already missing watching episodes after school, and I just eventually didn't care. Overall, I think that the show does have an influence, but I think it's a very short-lived influence on anybody. Now, some people will probably say they've seen every single season an incarnation of the Power Rangers, and that's cool, I guess. It's just not for me. As of right now, there's a lot of them that are on Netflix, and I've had a chance to sit down and re-watch some of the episodes that I thought I would get the most enjoyment out of. And you know what? I did, in a way. This is a show, once again, that tries to teach a lesson amongst the violence, which is totally fine. All kids' shows try to have a message for the kids that are watching it, some sort of educational or some sort of moral message hidden beneath the robots and the monsters shooting lasers at each other. Most shows do a good job at that. Power Rangers does a pretty decent job at it. They made you care about their characters. Now, is this something that I would recommend you go back and watch? Sure, why not? If you want to see the starting point of this phenomenon in the 90s, absolutely go back and watch it. Watch a couple episodes, watch that Green Ranger story arc, Green with Evil, and watch maybe a few here and there. Scroll through Netflix and see the episodes. If there's a cool looking monster on it, check it out. 
I don't give this as big of a solid recommendation as I would for X-Men the Animated Series, but I do recommend it if it's like a rainy Sunday afternoon and you've got nothing else to watch. So that's going to do it for me on this episode of I Missed the 90s. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode on the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. If you liked the episode, hit that like button down there. Uh, leave a comment. If you grew up with Power Rangers and it's something that you really liked, I want to hear about it. If there was a favorite episode, a favorite character, a favorite monster, let's talk about it. If you want to stay up to date when the next episode drops, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be all taken care of. Until next time, go, go, Power Rangers. God damn.